Are you ready? Oh, yeah! Strap yourselves in for the Gaming Hub. With your host, Tyler. You can't handle the truth. Graham. The force is strong. And Steven. You cannot be serious! Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome into the Gaming Hub. This is episode number 131. I'm your host, Tyler. Uh, joined as always by our two co-hosts. Let's start with Graham. Graham, how are you this week? I'm doing well this week. It's been a good week overall. Uh, work's been going good. Uh, got to play that game that everyone's been highly anticipating for a long time, which obviously is Red Dead Redemption 2. And other than that, I played some NHL 19, not much, just a little bit, and uh, also still working my way through Overcooked 2. Getting towards the end, uh, once I get that finished, I think I'm going to try it online, competitive, and just okay. see just see how other people is and how I stack up against them, because that game, I can just see like how chaotic it can be when you're facing other people, and it's really good. So... Um, Definitely interested in seeing what they have for achievement-wise anyways. Just get in there and try it for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, cool. Other than that, that's about all I've been playing. Cool. Um, let's also say hi to Steven. How are you? Uh, I'm doing pretty okay. Uh, did not get a chance to play Red Dead all that much. I had a pretty busy weekend, and it flowed right into um, the, the week. The work week, I should say. Um, and... I, but I have played a decent amount. Um, I got some time in. I'm definitely not as far as Tyler, though I am much farther than Graham, surprisingly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I've been enjoying what I've been playing of it, uh, yeah. despite what Twitch chat uh, is <laughs> just, saying. Just it's sad, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's fake news. Not even close. Um, but it, it's fun. It is it is a little slower. Uh, but it, it's I, and it's just an amazing, amazing game. Yeah. Um, that's really, oh, I have been playing a lot of Madden, too. So I, those are the two games. I don't know why, but I mean, I've been more addicted to Madden than I ever have been in the past. Um, so th- that's the two things I've been doing. Other than that, it's just school and work, as mm. per usual. Um, yeah. yeah, nothing really else. What about you? How are you? I'm pretty good. Uh, you know, we're recording a day early because uh, tomorrow I get to go do a fun appointment where I might be a little out of commission for a day or two afterwards. So... That uh, isn't so fun. I'm not especially looking forward to that, but I appreciate everybody joining us on Twitch Live for uh, the episode a day early. And, of course, all of you out there listening on uh, whatever podcast platform you listen to, also on Dash Radio. Uh, Hi to everybody there, and we appreciate you listening. For me, I'll be honest, like, Stephen, this is like the maybe one of the first times ever you played a lot more Madden than I have in a week. Uh, I'm usually the big Madden fan. You play a ton of it this week. I'll be honest with you. I haven't wanted to play anything other than Red Dead Redemption 2. Nothing. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Kind of give our impressions of the game. Spoiler free. Because we're all at different stages in the game. And everybody out there listening is probably at a different point in the game. Or hasn't picked it up yet. So it'll be spoiler free. And uh, we'll, we'll get into a good discussion about the game. And talk about uh, our impressions of it so far. So that's been my week, but uh, before we get into Red Dead and other games out there like Fallout 76, which I think we're going to talk about as well, I want to get through the business that we need to get through here. So we'd love to have you join the community, everybody, and there's a few different ways to do that. You can go to Facebook, the Gaming Hub Forums on Facebook, and join there. You can go to Twitch, where we're broadcasting live right now for episode 131. And look up TXH Gaming Hub on Twitch. Hit that follow button so you never miss when we go live. Again, TXH Gaming Hub on Twitch. From either of those places, Twitch or Facebook, you can find our Discord. And on Twitch, super easy. Just hit exclamation point Discord. Um, But there's also a link on both of them for our Discord channel. And got a lot of good discussion going on there. Uh, We have channels, uh, channels dedicated to all sorts of different games. And uh, other topics as well. So a lot of good stuff going on there. And uh, we have a YouTube uh, channel. The the Gaming Hub Podcast on YouTube. Take a look at that. And Twitter at TXH Gaming Hub. I want to remind everybody that we are the official podcast of the XboxHub.com. 
Uh, check out the xboxhub.com for all the latest in all your gaming news from the world of Xbox and any third party news as well. But uh, even though we cover everything here on the show, including PlayStation, Nintendo, etc., we are the official show of the xboxhub.com. All right. I should talk about our giveaway, guys. Cause Probably. We're about to enter the fifth week of that. And kind of a big deal. For us, anyway. Biggest giveaway we've ever, ever done. So, huge. it is huge. Just for us, it's huge. We're giving away a Nintendo Switch to uh, somebody out there in our community. Here's how it works. It's kind of like a treasure hunt. We give a clue away every single week. Starting in episode 127, we gave away the first one. This will be the fifth clue we've given away tonight. And the only way to get the clues is to listen to the show. So if you miss some, you're new to the show, go back, check it out, starting at 127. You know, heck, start at episode one if you want to. But you'll start getting <laughs> clues at episode 127. Don't and... start at episode one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, there were some growing pains like any other show has, sure. But uh, yeah, starting with episode 127, we start uh, giving a clue. And the clue is about a person, an object, a place, a game, a system, something from the world of video games. And the first person to correctly guess what that is, based on the clues we've given, will win a Nintendo Switch system as the biggest giveaway we've ever had for a holiday giveaway. And I know it's weird we're doing holiday giveaway starting like early October, um, now it's November, but... We, uh, we wanted to make it fun and something unique and different, uh, unique to us. So we're doing it this way. And the only, like I said, the only way to get the clues is to listen to the show. The only way to submit guesses is to join Facebook or Discord and use the uh, Google Forms doc that we have there and send in and submit your guesses. We will not accept anything through Twitter or email or Twitch chat or whatever. Okay, email, by the way, uh, the gaming hub podcast at gmail.com. We appreciate any feedback, suggestions, whatever that you have for us. Uh, you can also submit questions to be around the show that way. Really appreciate that as well. All right, so the last thing I'll say on that, we have a special sound, which we're not going to play for you again this time. We played the last uh, few, but, you know, you should know by now it's sleigh bells. When we play that sound, that's when we're going to give the clue away during the episode. And... Everybody only gets two guesses, so you can't spam us with a ton of guesses for everything you can possibly think of. Everybody only gets two, and except for patrons, they get three. Patrons also get an extra clue per month. Uh, we put up our October Patreon exclusive clue last week, and we'll be doing another one in November, uh, provided somebody doesn't correctly guess uh, the thing before then. So, if you want to help support us, there's a couple different ways to do that. You can do that through Twitch. Uh, if you're an Amazon Prime member, you get a free Twitch Prime sub to use every single month. If you choose to use that on us, awesome. We really appreciate that. And we thank you so much to everybody who has done that. If you don't want to use it on us, cool. Use it on somebody, though. Don't just let it sit there. Help somebody achieve their goals and uh, achieve the things they want to do uh, through streaming. Okay, the other way is through Patreon. Patreon dot com slash gaming hub and for as little as two dollars a month you'll be uh you'll get extra clues and an extra guess for our holiday giveaway plus exclusive content that we record monthly for as little as five dollars a month you're entered in to our monthly patreon exclusive giveaway for sixty dollars in gift cards to your whatever system you choose so spend it whatever you want. It could be a game, movies, music, whatever it is. TV shows, whatever you want to do. But we do $60 uh, in giveaways for one winner per month. That's a patron of our show. So again, patreon.com slash gaming hub if you want to take part in that. And we really appreciate everybody who has supported us that way. And I want to spend or send a special shout out to Kenny C., for uh, joining in on Patreon this week at uh, the $5 level. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much for your support. We appreciate that more than you know. And same goes to everybody who has uh, signed up on there. All right. Guys, let's head into 
the news. In the news. And let's start with that game Graham mentioned, Red Dead Redemption 2. So, I just kind of want to go through, we've talked a lot about kind of the the stories that have come out about the Rockstar working conditions and all that stuff. We're, we're done talking about that. Yes. Now the game's out. We're just going to focus on this video game. Steven, I want to go to you first, and then we'll go to Graham. Steven, what are your early impressions of Red Dead Redemption 2? It's slow. Um, I'm just going to start with the negatives. The game's really damn slow. Um, it That's not a bad thing, but it does feel like you need to kind of do it, put a decent amount of effort in to get things going. And not just with the story, just anything in the game in general that's not just, like, exploring the world. Uh, but the world is gorgeous. Uh, playing in 4K on the Xbox One X, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, there's a lot to do. The, the world's big. You can... I, I think the mini games are, are a little little low. I think they could have had more. Um, I think Red Dead One might Red Dead Redemption One might have had more. To be honest with you, uh, I can't say for certain off the top of my head if I remember them all. But it's it's fun. It's fun for what it is. Um, it's an amazing game. Like you mentioned, you think it might be the best video game you ever played. I, I think you're right. But it's it's one of those games where if I don't have like six hours in a row to dedicate to, I almost don't want to play it, which is why I haven't played it that much this week because the one time I did get on, I'm like, I'm just, I'm tired. I don't feel like waiting around, um, to get things started. And so I just kind of, I played for like half an hour and then I got off and went to Madden. Um, and that's kind of where I'm at. Like I'm excited for tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday, because I'll have a good chunk of hours to play. And Saturday, I probably will play for like 12 hours straight. But it sucks that on the weekdays, like, I feel like I can't play. Or I don't feel like that I can't play. It's just I don't really want to. Because I know I'm only going to have like an hour to play. And I don't know, maybe I'm being really negative right now. But I don't think it's just... I'm not criticizing the game for that. I think the game's amazing. I'm just saying... I personally don't feel like playing the game for only an hour. Like, I'd rather just not play it. It's, like, not worth it to me. I mean. All right. That, and that's fair. Uh, Graham, you you originally weren't going to get this. And not just right. originally. Like, for the longest time up until the week before the game. This released. is true. Then I surprised so, everyone and said, I yeah. got it. Then you're like, yeah, I'm getting it. I fooled you. I fooled you. Yeah. So, fool you've played. You actually, you're a little, you're behind where I'm at. You completed chapter one today. Yes. So just thoughts on the game. Do you regret the purchase at all? Or are you optimistic about what you're going to find going forward? Uh, I definitely don't regret it. And I am optimistic for sure. Um, now you guys are talking about like it's the greatest game of all that time. Or that's what you think. So I'm basically, I was trying to compare it to I'm like Breath of the Wild. That game struck a really good chord with me and i remember when i got that game i don't know if it's because it was the nintendo switch and it was all new I, I i don't think it was because of switch i think it's just because it was breath of the wild and basically that's all i did like i couldn't wait to get home and play it and when the weekends came i got up early in the morning and had my coffee and then i got right to it uh red dead redemption 2 hasn't had the same effect on me now, it's a great game, and as Steven alluded to, the game is gorgeous. It looks amazing in its 4K HDR glory. Like, it's awesome. Um, but like I said, I haven't really got into the part where I explore the open world and stuff like that. But I'm the story is really intriguing. I like the characters. I'm, I'm definitely engaged with the story and see, like, where it's going. And I like how they interact with one another and stuff like that. So I can see this game being really great and stuff like that, but it just didn't have the draw that Breath of the Wild. But like I said, it's early into it. I'm definitely in this for the long run to get through it. I don't know how much the side quests and stuff like that. Some of it like seemed a little tedious, and I just want to like get through it a little quicker. But we'll see if I would go through if I'm like more calm and relaxed like that. So yeah, that's my first impressions. I'm definitely looking forward to putting more time into it and see see where it goes. All right, and and that's good. I'm glad you're liking it so far. So for me, uh, Stephen said it earlier. This might be for me the best the best video game I've ever played. 
And here's why. Yes, it's a little slow. Okay. But that's good. And here's why. The it immerses you into you get like sucked in. Like I feel like I'm an outlaw in the Wild West when I'm playing this game. Because one minute I can be herding sheep or horses or something or hunting or doing whatever. And the next minute it's a major set piece where the mission like advances the story in a significant way and does all this stuff. I love the pace of the game. I think the pace of the game is tremendous. And I, I find that for me, it just sucks me into the world that much more. So there are other games that are really slow, but they don't do it well. I feel like this one does. I feel like this one executes that incredibly well. I love the world. I love the characters. I love uh, just the way the game looks. Although that doesn't necessarily mean a lot. There's a lot of gorgeous games out there that are not very good. But in this case, it just it's the cherry on top. I I can't really find anything negative to say about this game. The 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 stuff that I was concerned about going into the game was some of the minutia of it like having to groom your horse and you know your hat and all that stuff and that to me is it's just added to the experience. It's not taking away from it and it's not something that I feel is tedious. It's not anything where I'm like, oh, I got to do this now. It just fits right in perfectly. And I, I can't say enough good things about this game. Steven, you played Grand Theft Auto V. Graham, I think you did too. I don't know if you finished it. No, I didn't finish it. I was playing it on the PS3, yeah. PlayStation 3 when it first okay. came out. Okay. So I want to go Steven first here. How do you feel this game measures up against GTA V? in terms of all the stuff we've talked about, world, characters, everything? Um, where? Let me see where to start here. <laughs> like, I, I think I got more invested in the characters in GTA V quicker. Um, I, at least where Michael and, and Trevor are concerned. I liked Michael almost from the get-go. I liked Trevor from the get-go. Um, I actually, I liked Franklin from the get-go, too. Uh, and I, I thought the characters around them, while they were a little more over the top, they were also more enjoyable than what I've... Like, I haven't really found any characters that I love. I mean, I have a few favorites. I, uh, I really like Hosea, um, and I really like Lenny. And I I don't know how I feel about Arthur yet, and I don't think that's a bad thing. I, I think they're doing a good job of slowly, like, establishing the background of all the characters... So as far as that goes, like, it was quicker to get into GTA V, but I, I think the characters here are going to be more realistic and more in-depth. Um, let's see. The, like, well, I mean, just because the game came out later, it means it's going to be better looking. The world, it's it's hard to compare because GTA V was... GTA V was a big world, and it was pretty realistic for, like, being based on the real world, I thought. It did a pretty good job of mimicking L.A., and it's surrounding regions, so I don't have a that like it was it was Los Santos, right? Was was very well done. Um, G, or Red Dead Redemption yeah. 2's world so far has been really good, more like the Wild West um, version of. I think they're in Texas. I could be wrong on that. They're kind of um, all over. So, so I I feel like when you get to like San Denis, I think I feel like that's supposed to be more of a New Orleans type thing. I might be wrong on that but i feel like that's kind of where that's supposed to be in terms of you know geography in the game but you know how do you feel about you know in gta 5 you had a lot of character interaction and stuff like that i i felt in gta 5 sometimes it was a little forced um and maybe not forced but just not I don't know, authentic in the way that, okay, I have to suspend disbelief a fair amount to, to kind of buy in. And, and in Red Dead, 
I don't feel that. And part of it's because, you know, I'm, I'm really partial to Red Dead. I mean, Red Dead Redemption, the original, was the first open world game I ever completed. I'm usually a linear game type of guy, and I get why people who love, like, linear games with huge action set pieces, or, you know, frequently, might not like this. But do you feel, Stephen, like the, the interaction between the characters is just a little more natural? Sure, but... I mean, this is going for more realism where GTA 5 never was trying that. It was always over the top, like a parody of itself. I I didn't necessarily think it was that unrealistic to have the, the way the three characters of GTA 5 met up. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't really just suspend my disbelief as much as I mean, it seems like you did. Sure. Um, I, oh, I, feel, I, I feel like Rockstar is always a little over the top with their stories, and they are in this game as well. There's plenty of moments in this game where you're like, really? But at the same time, I feel like the connection, I feel like the gang aspect of it, which I was initially worried about. I feel like the gang aspect has strengthened the storytelling in the game because there's established relationships that already exist between all of these people. Mm -hmm. Yes. But see, that's, that's why I don't think it's a fair comparison is because... sure. Like, you start out as a gang, whereas in GTA V, they became a gang, or whatever you want to call other, yeah. what the yeah. three of them yeah. were. Um, so I don't necessarily think that's fair comparison. Uh, I, I I don't know. I mean, you can... I'm not saying GTA V is better than this. I, I still haven't played enough Red Dead Redemption to, mm. to figure out. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. You know, and I'll, I, I'll, I'll tell you, like, I've, I've kind of taken my time with the game... You know, I'm, I'm still further along. I've just had more opportunity to play it, but I'm 38% complete with the story after one week, which I love because that means I've got a couple weeks left of playing the game. But the reason I make that comparison is because Red Dead Redemption 2 has achieved the biggest opening weekend in entertainment history. That includes movies or anything. And the reason I say weekend is because... It didn't come out on a Tuesday, it came out on a Friday. The game that came out on a Tuesday that had better sales was GTA V. For the for the first, uh, you know, three days or whatever of sales. But Red Dead has posted, what, over $700 million in sales? For the first three days. Biggest opening weekend in entertainment history. Not just video games, entertainment history. That's why I compare the two. I know there's a lot of differences in story and world and all that stuff. But I, I think it's a fair comparison to say, which one do you like more? A, it's the same company. And B, they're kind of competing with each other in terms of sales figures. So, Graham, you played some of GTA V. Yes. Like, impression-wise, like what do you feel like you're drawn to more? The world of GTA or, and I know GTA is set in a different city every time and all that stuff, but, or the world of Red Dead. Uh, with the little I've played of Red Dead, I would say Red Dead 2 r right away. Like, even though, like, I played GTA 5, and uh, I got to the point where I unlocked all three characters. And the one thing that I really liked about that game is when you would switch characters, like, they would still be, like, doing their own thing in the world, and you would just, like switch to wherever they are and their moment in time. So I thought that was a really cool feature. Um, when I played Red Dead 2, when I got back into it, like I find like uh, Arthur is just like sitting down somewhere and stuff like he's in like kind of random locations. And like I said, I haven't got to the point where he could be wandering all over this open world. So I'm curious if that's happening. But I think I like the whole Western like... Um, not atmosphere, but, you know, setting compared to in the city and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, but I really did enjoy GTA V. I just completely got away from it. I don't know what mm -hmm. reason. And then I never, ever went back to it. So I enjoy the world, too. And that's why I want to ask you guys, because I might be a little biased. Like, I majored in history in college and stuff like that. So that was one of my majors anyway. And I just, you know, really love this type of world because it... It's so, um, it just reminds me of all that stuff. Like, 
it, I feel like there's a little more realism to it. And there's been an article saying it's too realistic. I, I kind of reject that notion. Like, not every game needs to be, like, constant, super fast action. Like, there's something to be said for immersion. But, Steven, you brought it up earlier. So, with Arthur, the main character, I think one of the super cool things, like, I just finished Chapter 3. And it's really hard to tell, like, still, what Arthur's story is going to end up being. What type of person he is going to end up being. And just how the character is going to end up. Like, isn't that a little intriguing to you? Well, I mean, that's kind of the crux of the game, probably. The same way it was for Marston in Red Dead Redemption 1. So, yes, I'm intrigued. That seems like where the main story is. Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, no, no, no. I I don't want to. So, I feel like Marston was a little more defined in the first one. In terms of he had the family and that that his motive was to protect that, right? And right now, you know, Arthur, you're not really sure which way he's going to go. And some of that's probably up to us as players. Well, that's what I was thinking. I'm pretty sure that is up to us. Yeah. There might be a major choice in this game near the end like there was in GTA Five at the end. So yeah. we don't know. But I, I feel like that's part of the fun for me is just seeing Arthur's character progress and seeing him, uh, you know, grow, for lack of a better word, but, you know, develop and seeing kind of where it goes. Yeah. Like, at one point, I was thinking, I'm like, do I want to be that person? Like, I kind of had to make a decision. So I kind of, like, chose now which direction I'm going to go in. So we'll see. Maybe at one point I'll just change it up again just to see, but I don't know. Like, I like games that offer that. Like, that was one yeah. thing about, like, Mass Effect that I really liked. Like, how you could be, like, it was either your Paragon or uh, I forget what the other one is. So you can do either a good deed or a bad deed, and then it reflects how people, like, see you and stuff like that. So I, I, I think that's Renegade, yeah. So, yeah, yeah I... I like games that did that. I think the first one that introduced that to me, I think, was Fable. Um, I think it was either Fable 2 or Fable 3. And I tried to make him the most evilest person as possible. <laughs> I like, I like your skin change and all yeah. that stuff. But the thing that disappointed me is you didn't get as like as far evil looking as it showed on the cover of the, the game or whatever. And I'm like, I'm going to look like that. So, yeah, like, you develop horns, horns, and then, like, that's about it, right? Yeah, that's yeah. Fable 2, then, because that was a, yeah. uh, a gripe of Fable 2. I remember that. Uh, yeah. um, like, I, I don't know. I hate – actually, I'm, I'm with, uh, not with you, per se, really, Graham, because uh, I thought, like, Mass Effect and games like – well, Fallout, like, Fallout 4, for instance, yeah. um, a lot of them are boiled down to you always make – because you get to get the best stuff, you got to be either all good or all bad. There's no nuance choices. Mm-hmm. Like the first game to do nuance well was The Witcher Three. Um, it was hard to tell which which decisions were going to lead which way. Um, what you thought might be good ended up not being so good, and there was no like points on the screen like, "Hey, you're like like chaos, lawful good or evil or like you know the D and uh, D and D type." Like archetypes, you know, there's nine of them, right? Lawful good, lawful neutral, lawful or uh, lawful evil, right? And um, and then the other three. Uh, but I think Red Dead Redemption Two kind of goes the more Witcher route, where it's like more nuanced. Like for me, I've been playing. It's it just based on the situation I'm in. There's some I'll, I'll help people if they seem like they deserve it, but if a guy's being a not so nice he's gonna get a bullet between the eyeballs that's just how i've been playing and if that makes me bad in the game's eyes that's fine but it is annoying that there is an achievement tied to like getting max um i think honor or like max infamy i I don't know what the negative thing is called uh so i really wish they wouldn't have done that because now i feel like i have to go one way or the other just for the achievement and that's really stupid because the game would have been better if you could make choices based on whatever you felt at the time like not every choice is gonna be so black and white and i i don't like that games have done that i think that's been a one of the issues with 
games for storytelling is that not everything is black and white and games tend to kind of force you to be either good or bad um and and stay on that path because like there are skills in a lot of these games that are are only unlocked if you have a high enough or low enough um you know honor rating and i'm like infamous is one example fallout i think mass effect too i could be wrong um on that but that i mean that's just what it is to me i don't know where i'm sitting at yeah no you're you kind of said what I was going to say there, that no one's all good or all bad. So, you know, for me, like, I don't go in saying, well, I'm going to be good, so I'm always going to make the good choice. It depends on the situation. It depends on the person. Yeah, so, like, if, yeah. If, if, I, if I see, and it seems like someone's going to, like, rat me out, even if I threaten them, like, they might not have a, a breath anymore. <laughs> But there are other people that if they if I don't think they're gonna rat me out, I'll I'll let them go. Yeah. Um And I, I and again, I just I really wish the honor system kind of wasn't there, and it just like it kind of did it internally, and you don't need to show me. And I think that if that achievement was gone, I would be happier. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll be honest though, I'm not playing this game for achievements. Like if I end up with 300, great. If I end up with 800, awesome. Um, but I'm just playing it for the experience. And I feel like there's a, there's enough nuance in this game that you're not always going to make the same type of choice every time. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that's a good thing. But uh, but anyway, yeah, I mean, it seems like we're all enjoying the game. Yeah. Uh, it's funny, degrees. though. Go ahead. Go R- ahead. Real quick. Um, I was trying to bring this up earlier. But I was finding a good time. It's, it's like I'm at school or I'm at work, right? And I'll be thinking, I'm like, man, I can't wait to go home and play play Red Dead. And then I get home and it's like, man, I don't want to play Red Dead. And it's it's been like that every day this week, um, including today. Except today we had to record, so <laughs> I didn't get I, that kind of choice was was given to me, <laughs> you know. But I just find that funny. I think I don't know why that is, and I, I really do think it just has to do with the pacing issue, or not the pacing issue. I don't think there's anything wrong with the pacing, but I don't think Red Dead's a game where you can pop in for thirty minutes and have a good experience. No, I agree with that. I think that Red Dead's the type of game where you need at least two hours to sit down and play. To, you know, do a few of the missions and experience some of the different things and feel like you advance the story and all that stuff. Like, I can tell you, I've, I, I've yet to play Red Dead 2 for less than two hours at a time. And I do feel like that's kind of a necessity playing the game. That's just for me. Other people might feel differently. So... All right. Anything else on Red Dead Redemption 2, guys, before we move on? Nope. So far, so good. Yeah. Really? I'm, I'm loving it. I, like I said, this I, I feel playing it, this might be the best game I've ever played, and I'm just taking my time and enjoying it. So. It's good. Yeah. All right. And if you didn't think yeah. we went in-depth, we're going to do a special, like, Discord or Patreon um, early access, like, not review, but impressions. Yeah, uh, where we, where we in dig in, and days. there might be some mild spoilers things like that uh but we'll really dig into the details of the game all right so as microsoft is rumored to be developing xbox controllers for tablets and phones and i don't know if everybody out there saw like the images of this but they are it like separates into two and goes you know half on each side of your phone or tablet and it looks just like an xbox controller Guys, any interest in this? And I guess my, my other question is, you know, it's a rumor right now, but doesn't this fit right in with what they're doing with Project X Cloud for next yes. year? No, it, it does. And I'm not really interested. There's certain games that I will play, like, on my tablet or my phone. And, like, these bigger games that I would play on my Xbox or whatever like that, that's not a game that I would want to play on my phone. And I understand for some people it works and stuff like that. But if if I'm going somewhere, like say on a trip, and I'm going to carry like a peripheral so I could play something or whatever, I would probably bring either my 3DS or my Nintendo Switch. So 
like I see how some people might enjoy it and stuff like that, but it doesn't really do that for me. And I've even tried some of the games. I think it was Deus Ex on my phone or my iPad, where it's got the controls up on the screen. But I, I didn't really enjoy it as much as like sitting with like a controller and like interacting with the TV or having like my 3DS. So to me, there is no appeal. But I know how it appeals to others. I don't know how you two feel. Uh, what do you guys? What's your take on it? Steven, uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, I have no interest, really. Um, it obviously is for xCloud. Like, come on. <laughs> that, that yeah, is I mean, right? <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, that's, that's what this is for. Um, but I, I can't say there's no it not going to be future interest if the service works out well. But, I mean, I kind of like to, I don't know, partition my life, I guess, in, in some ways. And when I'm at like school or work, I like to focus on like school or work. And I, I don't really have times where I want to play games on my phone. I, I, if when I'm at home, I'd rather just sit on my Xbox, you know? And when I'm out and about, like, I want to do whatever I'm doing out and about. Like, I, I don't know. I think this is more for, there's a lot of people that like playing portable Games. I mean, the Switch has sold boatloads, and a lot of people play that portable. I have yet to play it portable, um, and I have no interest in playing it portable. I bought it to play the games that were coming, not for the portability. But I know there's a lot of people that play it portable. I just am not that type of person. I don't travel very much. Um, I guess, like, well, I would say road trips, but I can't even do it on there because you don't always have the greatest cell service. So I don't know when I would use it to justify me actually getting it, even if the service ran really well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I guess if I feel like this is kind of competing with the Switch a little bit um, or trying to, you know, instead of Switch games, you can play Xbox games on your tablet with a controller the same way you can play with the Joy-Cons. But mm -hmm. I, I'm i not really interested in this. Not for really. Me, for, for me, it just comes down, I think, Stephen, you kind of alluded to this, but like how good the streaming service actually is. And I think the the other question here, like, I mean, isn't it pretty clear that they're still just setting up for next gen? Like, isn't all of this just sort of a, I guess, a test run for the Xbox, whatever they call it, Project Scarlet it's called right now? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I agree. So, for me, like, it depends on how, how well the service works. If it's pretty seamless and you can play games really easily on it, awesome. There might be times where I use it, but it's not going to be something I use every single day. Like, I'm not going to log in along every day to, you know, to work or whatever and play it on lunch. That's probably not going to happen. But in terms of, like, if I'm traveling or something, sure. Like, because there have been times where I've had to travel for work for like weeks at a time and i've packed like the xbox one into a suitcase and brought it with and to have the opportunity to maybe not have to do that would be pretty cool so that yeah i mean if it works out really well then and the service works uh you know in a in a really good way then sure i, I might give it a shot but it's not something that i'm hugely anticipating at this point all right. Anything else on that, guys? No. Um, no. All right. <laughs> I was going to say no, and then I was going to say something, but I'm like, well, that, that defeats my purpose saying no. But yeah, yeah. no. <laughs> All right. So, as we might see both Titanfall 3 and Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order next year, because Respawn has said of the games they're working on, they're, they're planning on releasing two of them in the fall of 2019. Man, that's a... That's a big fall for EA if they can get both of those games out. Yeah, next fall. and and was there? I think one of these were mentioned at uh, E3 this year, or yeah. either one of them. Well, no, Star Wars, Star, Star Wars, Wars Jedi, right? yeah, yeah, Fallen Order was mentioned. They didn't show any gameplay. They just had the interview with Vince Ampella, and they we saw nothing of Titanfall three. Yeah, so that kind of. Like, that'd be huge if they can get out of Titanfall 3. 
But wouldn't you think they would have tried to like work on building some hype for it for E3 if it was that close? Or do you think like were they expecting for be a surprise and now it's kind of been leaked? Like what do you what do you guys think? Yeah, I, I go ahead, Steven. I don't think they needed to build hype for it this E3. I think if it's their next E3, like and coming out mm-hmm. so quickly, like I think there's gonna be hype generated from that. And what else is really coming out next next fall? Um, that we know of, like uh, obviously there'll be a Call of Duty more more than likely, but there won't be but, no, yeah. there won't be a Battlefield. Right? No, there won't be a Battlefield. That's a by by year or oh, okay. every well, other there, year. There could be a Battlefront, although we don't know. That would be three EA games, um, and well, three they, potential shooters. They, they did it to Titanfall before. Games. They did it to Titanfall last time. With yeah, that's uh, true. With Battlefield 1. Man, they were really dumb for releasing Titanfall 2 where they released it. Because Titanfall really 2, dumb. I still say, Titanfall 2 was fantastic. But it got buried. Yeah. Because of when they released it and the fact that they made it compete against their own damn game. With Battlefield 1. Yeah, that was really stupid. It was. So, yeah, I just, I hope they learn from that. They say they have. But we'll see how that how that works out. But out of these two, you know, which one are you more hyped for? Can I say neither? <laughs> really, really neither. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you like Titanfall. I did like the first Titanfall. I didn't actually actually have that much fun with Titanfall two. Granted, I didn't give it a, a a long chance. I don't know anything about Star Wars Jedi. But I do know that everything EA has done with Star Wars so far has been not impressive, um, frustrating even, and so I'm I'm not going to get hyped for this game without having seen anything on it. Um, I mean, we assume it's going to be a shooter because it's Respawn, which already kind of turns me off because the most fun part of, well... Okay, I shouldn't say we assume, because it is called no. Star Wars Jedi. It's a Jedi game, order. so it shouldn't be so a shooter. So you would hope you play as the Jedi, but yeah. um, I, I have to see something. I, I can't get hyped for a game I, I don't um, I haven't seen, especially knowing that EA has already screwed up two Star Wars games already. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, get, I would obviously the answer is Star Wars because I'm not really interested in Titanfall 3, um, but I'm not overly hyped for it either. So uh, yeah. I'll say real quick, Graham, before you go, that... For me, it's hard to pick. For the opposite reason, for Steven, it's hard to pick. But I love the Titanfall series. It's one of my favorite shooter series out there. Um, I love Titanfall 1, especially after the improvements they made, like six months to a year into that game. It was just freaking awesome. Titanfall 2, I thought, was absolutely fantastic. And then I hear what you're saying on the Star Wars stuff with EA. But that's all dice. And... Uh, you know, I'll say, in my opinion, Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2 were, you know, Battlefield with Star Wars skins on them. And it had the worlds and the music and the weapons and stuff, and that's great, but it was basically Battlefield Star Wars. And and I don't feel that as much detail was put into it as they put into their Battlefield games. So I felt like they thought the Star Wars license alone was going to sell those games. And it kind of did. Yeah. Especially for the first one. Okay. But Respawn, they have a pretty good track record. And I feel like them taking on a a Star Wars game, and especially it being a Jedi game, so it's probably not going to be a shooter. It's going to be something different. I'm really optimistic for that, and I look forward to seeing it. So I'm pretty hyped for both of these. Graham, what were you going to say? Okay. Well, I was going to say um, Titanfall 3. I can't say I'm hyped for it because I was really looking forward to playing Titanfall 2. Got convinced to get it, and I hardly played it. So um, if I had to choose between the two for that reason, uh, I think I would go with Star Wars uh, Jedi just because you guys are saying it's most likely not a shooter because it's Jedi. So, and I'm not a huge fan of shooters. Like, I have my select ones and stuff like that. 
So if that's kind of maybe an open world RPG type game, then that could be really cool, like set in the Star Wars universe. So um, that that would be definitely my pick out of the two. Um, I'm I'm sure Titanfall three will be amazing, and you're gonna you're gonna yeah. talk about a great multiplayer <laughs> is, and then I'll end up getting it, and then you'll yeah. stop playing it because something else is out. So so uh, Grant, to be fair, and we've talked about this off air, but to be fair. Like, I didn't realize I was going to be traveling and living in hotels seven out of ten weeks for work, like, yeah. right in the window when that game came out. <laughs> so, yeah. not totally fair to me there. <laughs> but, anyway, I'd be really surprised if Star Wars Jedi uh, Fallen Order is an RPG, though. Mm-hmm. I could see this game being much more in the the spirit of, like, the Force Unleashed games. Okay, yeah. Things like that. <sighs> Just better. But yes. well, I mean, okay, yeah, so yeah. Real quick, Devil's Advocate here. You said Respawn has a good track record. They they made two games. Titanfall one and Titanfall two. And they're both Sure, two. but but and, the uh, key but the key players in that on on that team were also responsible for Modern Warfare two. Another shooter. Right. And Modern Warfare One, I know another shooter. <laughs> right? So... But they they've got a good track record with producing quality products. I know they're all shooters, but you know, I'm willing to give them benefit of the doubt and see what they can do here. And it's not dice creating another battlefield skin. I swear if this game, okay, this is pure speculation um, based on the name, but if this game is having you hunt down the Jedi after like order 66, um, you know, basically in between the third and fourth star Wars movies, I will not be buying it. Tyler will be, so I'll be playing it, but I will not be buying it. Um, because I, I'm not interested in that in the slightest. I'm so sick of shooting in Star Wars. I want my damn lightsabers. And the Force. And right. Yeah, and I'm, I'm yes. with you. I'm with you on that. Like, I don't know if I go as far as to say I absolutely won't buy it, but I think they know better than to make another shooter. I, I do. And you say that. Unfor- I know. <laughs> I know. But they gave it to a company that's only ever made shooters. I know. But it, it feels, well, I shouldn't even say feels. I, I just think they'll do something different with it. Hopefully they do. Optimistic, which is good. I know. I'm like taking on the gram role right now with this. <laughs> and, and I yeah, swear to God, I like it. this I game like it. has you like piloting like an AT-AT the entire time, I'm the run. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So EA talked about Project Atlas this week, something called Project Atlas. Steven, you want to tell us more about that? Yes. Just give me a second. Oh, I switched the image in on Twitch. So, all right, Project Atlas is a um, it's a future. What they they envision is a future in which games go further beyond the immersive experience players enjoy today. Uh, that was said by the CTO of EA, Ken Moss, um, and he explained that like he all these. Things like the AI cloud, distributed computing, social features, and game engines. I'm, uh, this was from the GameSpot article. I can uh, link in chat um, on Twitch. Uh, they said that they've grown and evolved separately. And Project Atlas is supposed to is trying to unify these developments. And so right now they have like a thousand people working on this project. Um, and there's no like telling what exactly they're working on but that's the idea is they're trying to control like or not control but combine all these different aspects that have kind of been separate in the past and it's ambitious the way it's it's made to be sound i i don't know what you guys thoughts on this i don't know if i even think that ea is the right company to do this um i i'm not saying they're not i just it's hard to say for 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 certain. Um, based on their like E three presentations, <laughs> I, I would I would pass. But you know, a thousand people is a lot in in the video game industry to work on one project. So this this can't be small. Um, I I don't know where they're going with this. I feel like it's more connected with what we're thinking that. Xbox is trying to do and what EA's already kind of done with their like origin access thing um, where you can stream the games and pay like a monthly service. I don't know if that's the case. I mean, I don't 
it's put possible but doubtful that EA gets into the console development or like a streaming box type service or partner with someone to do it. Um, but I, it's it's pure spe- speculation at this point. But that project sounds big, and it's interesting to see what what comes of it. I mean, what are you what are you guys looking at when you're when you're hearing about this? Well, I think the promise of creating you know bigger worlds and you know more immersive yeah. games things like that is always good can they do it yeah is the question That's so the thing, right? i will say that everything i've seen on anthem so far and i just saw um ryan mccaffrey from ign tweet out some stuff today about anthem that's just glowing about it saying that you know the latest thing he saw is just fantastic so you know there, there are some things that EA is doing that are really good. Now, because because they're really bad at putting together E3 conferences, that doesn't necessarily mean all the games are bad. I know. Um, they, they, I know. <laughs> I know. We like to make fun of them for it. But they've had their share of pretty decent releases, and I think Anthem's, Anthem will be a really good test for them in terms of what they can do with that kind of bigger world and all that type of thing. And it sounds like that game is sort of the first step in the direction they want to move with this. But I still think, and we mentioned it earlier in the show, this is building towards next gen. And I don't think we're going to see anything that is the fruits of this labor, these thousand people and all this stuff. I don't think we're going to see any of that before 2020. But I'll be really interested to see what they can do with this and what they come up with on next generation hardware, which I still really think will be in 2020. So I don't know, Graham, what do you think? Uh, Well, pretty much what you said, if it's going to make the game more immersive and better and can have all these systems running and more smoothly, it's great. Like all the power to it. Uh, I'm guessing, like you're saying, with the computing power that this is going to require, this will be next gen. And they're just, I guess, future proofing, basically, or just getting to let us get us a little taste of what's to come. And yeah, no, it's going to be great. Like these systems, like I say, with the computing power, they can do so much more. Like, um, yeah. So I'm, I'm excited for it. Um, like I said, it's still a long ways down the road. So it's not like, I'm gonna to get too excited for it because there's gonna be a lot of other stuff to uh, to occupy my uh, my brain power. And real quick, I'd like to give a couple more quotes from from uh, from Moss uh, that I thought were interesting. One of them saying that they're trying to leverage AI and machine learning to give like game makers the ability to craft in-game interactions with non-playable characters in a way that is virtually indecipherable from human interaction. So for those of you that know what like the Turing test is. Um, it's like that, that's the idea is trying to make computers, um, perform in a way that you can't tell if it's a computer or a person behind the decision, um, without knowing, you know, Mm -hmm. that's the idea. Uh, also EA is trying to create music from those, like the robots. (laughs) And I thought that's funny. Um, and it'd be interesting to, to see how that works, but I do like the idea of, interactions being more realistic um a lot it's all programmed in most games and sometimes it's easy to exploit and if if npcs might make a realistic choice it'd feel more like an online game Uh, i think that technology is still probably a few years off but it's it's cool to think that they're doing it right now yeah absolutely so you know a couple other things on this EA, I think, was on an investor call. I might be mistaken on that, so apologies if that's the case. But they also mentioned next-gen consoles in passing. And Rockstar also sort of mentioned in passing that Red Dead Redemption 2 uh, might, will get a remastered release in 2020 on next-gen consoles. So kind of confirming what we speculated on this show, that... The next gen consoles will come out in 2020, so basically two years from right now. Um, on top of that, Pete Hines said from Bethesda that Elder Scrolls 6 will likely be a next gen game. Mm-hmm. 
so we're looking at 2020 for kind of all this at the earliest. So my question to you guys is this, and not so much on the PlayStation side, because they've got good games in the pipeline still coming. But on the Xbox side, because they've got a pretty close relationship with EA, and they definitely have a pretty close relationship with Bethesda, which company do you think is better positioning themselves for the next gen between PlayStation and Xbox? Uh, I would say from the steps that Xbox have been doing lately since probably E3 and before, I'm going to go with I'm going to go with Microsoft with Xbox like buying the studios, doing the streaming, like uh having the more powerful console, like uh, Game Pass. Like they seem to be making a lot of great steps in the right direction so i'm i'm gonna choose xbox between those two okay Steven. yes i would agree um but i it won't be as big as like in a perfect well i'm not even saying a perfect world but if like past um the past didn't influence people's decisions xbox would probably cross playstation based on what we're seeing but because playstation has actually delivered good games um mm -hmm. on their console this gen and microsoft hasn't um really like there's nothing on not, the xbox not since, that compares to the good stuff you can get on playstation like you can get not, I mean, and yeah, i don't count not since 2015 Halo. yeah so um i i think it's gonna be hard to i don't know how many sony people are gonna switch to xbox if i don't know if there'll be that many um but i do think xbox at least as far as the decisions they made so far. And they can mess this up very easily if they don't get their message across, you know, like they did with the yes. Xbox One. Um, yeah. But I, I do think they're setting themselves up for a better better future, especially if they keep this, like, uh, Game Pass thing going. And I I haven't heard any mm. news about it, re like, in, a, in since it broke. But that whole system where you could buy the Xbox One and you got Game Pass and Gold, and you paid like thirty dollars, or it might have been forty for the One X. I wonder how that has been doing, because if that comes along, and yeah, I said this question. back then, if that comes along for this next generation, like I think you can get people to switch, if if they do that. And I I still think that the reason they did it now was to see how many people they'd get to bite, and see if it was worth doing. I'm with you, and I, I think the streaming and the, the service-based stuff is, is where we're going, the subscription-based stuff. So I think that's going to be the, the feature of Next Gen, whether people love that or not. I think that's where we're going. So Game Pass, things like that, EA Access, et cetera, et cetera. Plus, you know, Xbox has said they're working on multiple different consoles you got to think one of those is a streaming only box because they're working on the tech for with X cloud right now. They're going to launch it next year in beta. That's to me exclusively designed to just get the kinks out of the way before next gen launches. So I think Xbox is taking the steps right now to position themselves to be ready to go at launch in 2020 and ready to come back from what is really a generation where they kind of got their ass kicked a little bit in a lot of ways, um, both in hardware sales and game quality and stuff like that. The thing is, though, we talked about this off air, guys. Sony still has, like, the super ace in the hole, which is Kojima and Death Stranding. Yeah. And if they launch that game, you know, if that game releases at launch of the new console or anywhere near it, you know, even if they can just attach a release date to it by the time that console launches, that might negate a lot of what Xbox is doing. Do you agree? Yes. Would you buy both consoles? If Probably. Yeah. Probably. Um, I, think, I think to combat it, Xbox would have to put out, like, Halo six plus another big game um 
Mm-hmm. And I still don't know if that would work because Death Stranding yeah, I... has a lot of people on on that game, even though no one knows what that game is even really about. Um, right. I don't think Norman but... Reedus knows what that game is about. <laughs> I don't. I don't know either. But I think Halo, a, a release of Halo, which I think is gonna happen. I think Halo will be a, re, a launch title for the new system. That's gonna take care of your core base of players, but it's not gonna sway anybody over because anybody that loves Halo would have come over already with Master Chief Collection plus Halo Five, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, but. I think one of these, you know, one or multiple of these, you know, five studios they picked up, and then if they finalize the deal with Obsidian, they've got to get a couple games out in the launch window from them that kind of set Xbox apart to have a chance to compete against the announcement of Death Stranding during a launch window if Sony can pull that off. And right now... Who knows if Death Stranding will be ready for that? We have no idea. No. So, I think there's a lot uh, a lot in play there. We don't know where it's going to go. But I, I right now, I would agree with you guys. I think Microsoft's doing the better job setting themselves up to be ready for next gen. It's just we know Sony has that ace in the hole. And plus, we don't know what the hardware specs are going to be and what the price is going to be for each one. That's why I think if Microsoft can do that, like, pay 35 bucks a month thing for two years, like, oh, yeah, they'll yeah. win. Yep. Kind of like what we do with cell phones now, right? So, yeah. even if the yeah. Even if the total cost is 100 bucks more, if you don't have to pay it all up front, people are going to do that because yeah. we're, mm-hmm. as humans, are notoriously bad at thinking about that stuff in the long term. Absolutely. Guilty. So <laughs> they, you know, money now is worth more than money later. So mm-hmm. even if it is a hundred bucks more, if you're paying it over the long term and not to get in the economics here, but yep. paying it over a period of time with no interest, assuming like that's a, the better deal. Um, yep. Just saying. I don't know. All right, guys, anything else on that before we move on? Nope. Yeah. Nope. All right. So that's going to do it for news, everybody. <laughs> But before we head into releases, I think it's time to do our next clue for our holiday giveaway. And uh, again, that giveaway is to win a Nintendo Switch. If you can correctly guess the thing from video games, uh, person, place, thing, game, system, whatever, that we're giving clues about. This is the fifth clue out of 12. And the clue is this. Watch out for falling objects. Again, watch out for falling objects. That's the clue for the week. And we thank everybody for taking part. And good luck to you in terms of uh, guessing correctly. But that does it for news. And let's move on to releases for the week. Now, in And we'll start with Xbox. Where you can get the shape-shifting detective on the 6th of november carnival games also on the 6th and doodle god crime city on the 8th games with gold battlefield 1 through the 30th victor Brand through the 15th and through backwards compatibility assassin's creed through the 15th that does it for xbox steven what do you have for playstation all right for playstation you can get grip and world of final fantasy maxima on on the 6th and then on the 9th, you can get Hitman 2. Uh, as far as PS Plus games, you have until the 6th to get Laser League and Friday the 13th. And then starting on the 6th, you can get Yakuza Kiwami and Bulletstorm for PS Plus games. Graham, Nintendo. Okay, for Nintendo, we have Carnival Game for Nintendo Switch releasing on the 6th. We have Rage in Peace, which will be released on the 8th. And also released on the 8th, we will have sky force anniversary and those are f- for the nintendo switch all right let's That's go into questions <laughs> uh steven what do you have for us Band. all right first question comes from phoenix chaos yes did you guys play games more when you were younger or now that you are out on your own uh i'll go first definitely younger i buy more games now that i'm older and have the money but i, I there's no way i play nearly as much as i did when i was in high school not even close yeah, my answer is the exact same as Steven's. Uh, 
I don't play as much now, but I definitely buy more games. So, uh, basically, if a game doesn't hook me quickly, I kind of move on from it. But, because I just don't have as much time. But, uh, yeah, I, I definitely played more when I was younger. Graham? Yeah, no, it's basically the same with me. Uh, my game selection growing up was very minimal. But the hours I put into each game, like, holy moly, <laughs> substantial difference now i just have so many games and not as much time so no i definitely played more when i was a kid like i would pull all-nighters because i didn't have the worry about having to go to work or whatever right just do whatever i want stay up late as i want i'd be in my room playing my system so it's not like my parents would know you know <laughs> so no i definitely played more when i was a kid for sure all right Mr. Right. Jonas Blayness, what are or were your favorite coin-operated games? Oh, man. Um, probably, like, NBA Jam, like, when I was a kid. Going and playing that in the arcade. Stuff like that. Graham? Mine would be Ninja Turtles. I, I remember um, my aunt or whatever, she gave me some quarters or whatever i was playing and i guess i was so excited and i'm yelling and that and she's like i could hear you from the other end of the mall <laughs> so that's definitely uh definitely one of the games that i know i've played the most of and i really enjoyed it i was a huge turtles fan growing up so that that game sticks out <laughs> i'm gonna cheat here and say um uh, poker <laughs> at the casinos, but not, but actual game wise, probably Metal Slug. I loved Metal Slug as a kid enough that I bought it when it came on the Xbox Live Arcade. Um, and man, that game was meant to be a coin eater, but that was a fun game. All right, uh, you, next question for you guys from Drunken Jedi eighty eight. He said, "How do you guys find the time to complete big games such as Red Dead or Witcher three with busy life schedules?" I don't know, um, Graham. You have something for this? How? Um, so I'd be kind of like Witcher three. Um, you just focus on the main story and get through it. Try not to get sidetracked running around, do all these side quests and stuff like that. Um, just discipline, I guess. Uh, for The Witcher 3, what I did, I, I played on a really easy level to help me get through it a lot quicker. Can't do that with this game, so just discipline. Yeah, yeah. so I'll, uh, I'll kind of piggyback on what Graham said there. I, I think... You have to set aside blocks of time where you can play the game because those really long games, like we talked about earlier, often they're not real conducive to just playing in like 30 minute segments. You need to have a couple hours at least to sit down and play. So kind of blocking away that time where you know you're going to have time to sit down and play. And then sometimes, like Graham said, I'll throw the game on the easiest difficulty just because I want to get through the story and I kind of ignore a lot of the side quests just because I want to get through it and experience the game. So, Steven? Yeah, I don't. Um, <laughs> I mean, those of you who listen for a while know I don't complete many games. Um, it's kind of rare, to be honest with you. There was a game I just beat, though, and I can't think of it right now. Um, that's how... Uh, it's crazy. What was it? Anyways, um... But honestly, the the problem is, is I just stop playing after a certain point because uh, I something else comes up and I end up buying a new game. So if you're really serious about playing your games to completion, stop buying new games. Because if you don't buy them, then you don't have you, you have reasons to complete. Oh, it was Spider-Man. Spider-Man, I finished quickly. Um, but yeah, that's my answer. All right. Um, next question from Titus asks, what game do the other two hosts think they are better than you at, but you think you could beat them in? NHL for sure. I know they both think they're better than me at NHL, but neither of them have ten point games, and that's all that that's that's all I need. <laughs> like I'd wreck them. Um, so I'll say this in in Steven's defense, uh, I can't say for Graham necessarily. Um, with Graham, it might be NHL, but in St for in Steven's case, like Steven's gotten like miles better at Madden. I'll give you that. Like you have. Because we played Madden 18 against each other. And that was something where you wanted to quit 
like in the first half. Um, but you've gotten tremendously better at that game. I, I think I can still take you, though, um, at least uh, a decent amount of the time, like half the time. Graham? Uh, for me, I I was kind of thinking what it could be. Um, I'm going to go with something that's more relevant and what I can think of, and that is our fantasy hockey league because <laughs> i'm off to a good start and i when we did the draft you guys like oh i i did really bad with who i picked and stuff like that and i seem to be doing pretty good i know it's probably going to come to an end but that's that's my answer we are three weeks into the season graham yeah i know remember who dominated the first half of last year yeah did yeah so no, first, you, first you of won all too didn't you no, I no, didn't. no, he didn't. Tyler. Um, oh, yeah, because 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 Tyler dominated the second half of the season, winning like nine in a row or something like that. But oh yeah, I remember anyway, that. yeah. So, but anyway, like Graham. First of all, you have to understand that no matter what you do, we're gonna say it was terrible <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> that is true. So we don't necessarily think your draft was bad. We're just gonna say that. And you know, Graham cheats at fantasy hockey. We're just gonna leave it at that. So, Steve, <laughs> what do we have next? All right. Um, next question. Let's go with Xbox Xbox toss question. He said, "With the end of the year approaching, do you guys have any games you missed this year but plan on picking up at Black Friday? I'm getting near in Far Cry Five. Um, I'll go first here. I'm with you. I, I will be probably picking up near, assuming it goes on sale on the Xbox. I was gonna pick up Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but the person I game shared with kind of caved a week before Red Dead Two came out and bought it. <laughs> um, so I." I can't think of anything else I really missed besides Nier. And I, I have really wanted to play Nier, so it will be Nier. Uh, Nier, Nier Automata, of course. Yeah, and for me, for me, nothing that I missed just because, like, we do this show, so I think we kind of feel somewhat of an obligation to play a lot of stuff. So I end up getting most of the stuff that I would think about getting uh, almost right away. Yeah. And... You know, there's nothing I can think of off the top of my head where I'd be like, oh, yeah, I, did, I didn't get that when it came out. I would love to get it on Black Friday. So I, I can't say for sure. Graham? Yeah, no, I, I'm the same way. Um, basically, if I wanted it, I would have got it. Yeah. And there's and like there's certain games that I'm not going to get if I'm not going to play it. Like, uh, for one, Black Ops 4. I wouldn't have got that one. I had no intentions of getting it. And for some how for some reason I have no idea how I own the game. <laughs> yeah, so, it just appeared. Yeah, so you it can just download it. Just appeared. So um but yeah, there's really no game that I'm like, oh I'll wait till later. Like I'll yeah. I'll get uh Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but that's probably gonna be like next year sometime or whatever. I haven't finished the first one yet, so I don't see me picking it up on Black Friday. Because I know it's going to be cheaper at that point, but by the time I'm ready to get that game, it's probably going to be even cheaper. So there's really nothing stands out. Nothing I can think of anyways. Graham, I'll bet you that AC Odyssey will be cheaper on Black Friday than it will be next spring. Yeah. Well, it be next fall. Because <laughs> it could be a long it time. It might be next summer, fall. But then, but then there's going to be other games that you want to play. Like... You know, Skull and Bones will be coming out, and probably Kingdom Final Hearts 3, 3, which you'll get. And, oh no, it won't be next year, it'll be the year after. It'll be 2020 that Destiny 3 comes out, which I know you're super hyped for. Lies, lies. <sighs> no. You forgot Kingdom Hearts 3 <laughs> next year. Forgot yeah, it. that too. Something like that, yeah. Got that one. Got it. All right, so uh, a couple more we got time for. All right, uh, let's go. J Buzz asks, he's been playing Red Dead 2 almost nonstop for the past week, probably game of the year for him. He said, however, I do find it annoying that if you want a weapon, you have to equip it from your horse instead of the standard weapon wheel like in the first Red Dead and GTA. Is there anything that you find annoying in Red Dead that you would change given the chance? That. Um, I'll go first again. Sure. I, I also agree with you. That is really annoying. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten off my horse thinking my weapons were on my back because they just were like five minutes ago and I get into a, like a gunfight and all of a sudden I'm like, I only have my pistols. That's annoying. Um, other than that, like honestly, it's just the controls a little bit. Sometimes I think they're a little too, I don't even know the word, not janky, just 
loose. Like, you're running in town, and, like, I swear to God, I was walking. Or I, I think it might have been John. Yeah. And I hit a wagon that was in the road, and I got a $26 <laughs> bounty, and they started shipping at me. For hitting, there was, like, unarmed yeah. assault, me running into their damn wagon, because the control sucked. And yeah. that 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 kind of made me upset. Um, but those are the two annoying things I found. I, I don't know if you guys have any other answers. Yeah, for... For me, I mean, there's really not many at all, but I, I, I'll i go with you, Steven, on the controls. Like, they can be a little wonky, both with the shooting mechanics, um, but I don't mind that. I find that I've gotten used to it, and it's okay. I mean, I, I don't compare. I think it's unfair to compare Red Dead or any Rockstar game to your Destinies and Call of Duties and Halos, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, in terms of quality of just being a shooter, but... I, uh, just some of the, yeah, running controls, like, I, I was, uh, like, running, because I don't want to take the time to walk super slow across the whole yes. thing, and uh, accidentally, I, I didn't stop running quite soon enough, and, like, burst through the doors, and all of a sudden, I had these guys, like, drawing their weapons, like, you know, thinking I'm about to, you know, take them down or something. Yeah, and, I don't like that you charge through the doors when you run it. Yeah. I broke yeah. the windows that way in one of the towns. Mm -hmm. So so stuff like that, uh, you know, just it's super little things and it's nothing that's going to make me dislike the game at all. Graham? Yeah, so like everyone knows, I haven't played that far into the game yet. But one thing, and I know it's kind of like the immersion thing or whatever like that. But like, I don't know, I killed like 40 people or something like that. And then I got to go around and individually like hold down um i'm gonna say why because i play on xbox to like loot every body so i'd like for it to be where you can just like it'd be faster or something like that something because i, I at one point i'm like okay i see all these x's where everyone's dead and i'm like i i really don't want to check all these bodies and i don't know if certain ones will have something really good so i need to find it so I wish there was a way that it was quicker, um, maybe an option. I don't, I don't know. That's just one thing that I had to pick out. Like I said, I haven't played a lot of the game, so that's the only thing that stood out to me so far. Although I will say, Graham, like it's it's somewhat realistic in the sense that if you're looting like a raider or something, you might get like forty cents. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're looting a bounty hunter, you might get like twenty five dollars. Yeah. So stuff like that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. I looted a prisoner and, and got one penny. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's it's kind of realistic in terms of what you can expect those people to have. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So so I can so be more more cool. selective then. If you want to, yeah. Sure. Yeah. All, All right, right. One next, more. One more. All right. Uh, yeah. Let's go with Laura Bond's question. She said, "What are your least favorite gaming franchises?" Um. Okay, I'll, I'll go first if you Good. guys don't have one off the top of yeah, your head. Yeah, you can go, go, ahead. go ahead. Uncharted. Um, I want to like it and I can't. Uh, I it's the shooting. I I just I can't. I really don't like the controls in Naughty Dog games. The stories might be great. In fact, I know they're great. Um, I was interested in The Last of Us. I was interested in Uncharted stories. It's just the shooting is so bad and not fun. That it it just I don't want to play it. I'd I'd rather almost just watch the the, the damn gameplay yeah. on on YouTube. Um, yeah, that's that's yeah. So I'll I'll go next. Um, Graham, surprise! I'm not gonna say Zelda here, <laughs> but I will say, um, you know, and again after Steven's response, uh, the Gaming Hub Podcast at Gmail dot com and in advance of mine, uh, Fable and Dragon Age both of those two i just can't i can't get into i know a lot of people love them that's awesome enjoy them have fun i can't graham yeah so i can't say it's one that i don't like because i i'll pick one that i played the least of and it's a big franchise um and that would be gta um only gta 5 i've played and like got into it and went pretty far into it all the other ones 
basically my experiences of those games was you just try to create as much chaos as possible and see how long you go before you get shot down, like how many stars. Um, so I don't know if like, cause I never gave it a chance or whatever, but it never really appealed to me. Um, like I think five was getting closest to what I was enjoying, but a lot of people would say like three was like the best and maybe four and stuff like that. So I don't really know about those games. Um, so that, that's what I'm going to choose. That's mine. And you can send your hate mail <laughs> and I'll happily. Read yeah. It. The gaming hub podcast at gmail.com. So that's going to do it for questions, everybody for the week. Thank you. Everybody who sent them in. If you submit a question into the show, you're entered into our monthly giveaway, which takes place the last episode of every single month. And, uh, yeah, we thank everybody for sending in questions. So, all right, guys, let's get out of here for episode 131. And uh, before we do, we'd like to just remind you, we'd love to have you join the community by going to Facebook, the Gaming Hub forums there, or to Twitch, TXH Gaming Hub on Twitch. Make sure when you're there, hit that follow button so you never miss anything when we go live. Also, from either of those locations, you can click on our link for Discord, join our Discord server, and we have plenty of channels there uh, discussing specific games and uh, plenty of other things as well. And uh, we have a, a Twitter, at TXH Gaming Hub, and YouTube, the Gaming Hub Podcast, on there. If you want to help support the show, we'd really appreciate that. And not only does it help support us, but you can get some pretty cool stuff from it. So there's a couple different ways to do that. On Twitch, like I said, uh, TXH Gaming Hub on Twitch. If you are an Amazon Prime member, you get a, pre, a free Twitch Prime sub to use every single month. If you choose to use that on us, we really appreciate it. If not, use it on somebody, help them grow and achieve their goals. We also have a Patreon, and that's where the real benefits are. If you go to patreon.com slash gaming hub, you can uh, help support the show for as little as $2 a month. And for as little as $2 a month, you'll get an extra clue and guess for our holiday giveaway. So you get uh, an extra clue per month. So that'll get you to 15 instead of 12, or up to 15 instead of 12. And an extra guess, which will get you to 3 instead of 2. And for as little as $5 a month, you'll be entered into a Patreon-exclusive giveaway every single month where we give away $60 in gift cards to use on your favorite system, whether it's Xbox, PlayStation, or Nintendo. To get movies, games, music, TV shows, whatever it is you want to spend it on, it's up to you. But you're automatically entered if you're in on Patreon at at least $5 a month. And again, just want to say thank you to Kenny C for uh, coming on Patreon this week and helping support the show and the community. We thank you so much. We appreciate it more than you know. All right. All right. Real quick. um, Yeah, go ahead. Today happened to be the last episode of the month. Well, actually, it's technically November 1st, but we did not do the giveaway last week. So it, it would fall to this week, would it not? That is correct. So, so let's do one. I, <laughs> so congratulations, Boss Man Booth. Uh, you are the winner right. of the giveaway. Um, reach out to one of us and preferably Tyler because he has the cards yeah. and he will <laughs> send that to you. <laughs> yeah, so Boss Man Booth, thank you so much. And we really appreciate that. And like I said, everybody, you're entered to win if you just submit a question. And uh, for the monthly giveaway, for so many questions, you have to reach out to us and let us know that, uh, hey, I'm the person who won. If you're the Patreon winner, we reach out to you. So, all right, everybody. Boss Man Booth, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, for everybody else, thank you for listening uh, to episode number 131. We'll be back next week with 132. But until then, have a great week, everybody. They say play some great games, and I just want to mention, I don't care who you vote for, just go vote. Okay? If you're in the U.S. next week, doesn't matter which side you're on, just go vote and uh, take part in the process. Until then, until next week, everybody, have a great week, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care, everyone. Be safe. Bye-bye.